data can be monitored on a scan tool or measured at the ECU terminals. The difference is scan data can be measured from the driver's seat while the voltage measurements require high voltage safety equipment and gloves. Some of the examples in scan data would be delta state of charge, difference between the minimum and maximum state of charge, the battery current, IB battery, the battery current flow in amps, maximum value is 140 during heavy acceleration and 30 amps stopped with the HC on high headlights on while you're in park battery temp one two three now what that means is that you have three of these pits battery temp one battery temp two battery temp three and that is just like reading battery temperature uh, on a, uh, a normal OBD2 car uh, ambient temperature uh, transmission temperature engine temperature uh, battery block min voltage now typical reading is somewhere around a 60% state of charge and that means that you should be looking at 14.9 to 15.2 volts. That should be the lowest. The max, 14.9 to 15.2 again. And between all the battery blocks, when you look at those sense wires that we talked about that's on every positive uh, uh, block, inside the modules what's going to happen there is there should be no greater than three tenths of a volt between the min and the max there are three connectors on the battery ECU two on one side and one on the other we already showed you that one but we're going to show it to you again when we look at the two we can see on the left there there's two connectors that's all that means and the one there's one connector on the other end when we look at these connectors, they are designated B11, B12, B13. So when we talk about the individual circuits on these connectors, B11, one, that means connector 11, and that means cavity one, and that circuit is called AM. It's the auxiliary 12 volt battery voltage, always hot, typically at charging system or battery voltage 13.5 to 14 volts with the power switch on and the ready light on. Power contactors must be closed for the DC to DC converter to maintain its voltage. Here we're at B1124 the SI signal the blower motor duty cycle driver signal and we can see at the bottom that we could use a lab scope to look at this duty cycle. DVOM if you can measure duty cycle on it. B1210, that is the VBB3 circuit. Now that's battery voltage block 3. Remember they were numbered from 1 through 14. Now if we have a typical state of charge of 60%, that block voltage should be 14.9 to 15.2. You can also use diagnostic trouble codes that point you in the direction of your diagnostics. A P0, A1F, battery ECU code. That means that the battery ECU failed an internal test. Check TSBs for a reprogram update. Check powers. Check grounds. Then you're going to have to replace the unit. Here's a P0A7F and that's telling us the battery pack has deteriorated. The battery is deteriorated when resistance is too high. So the fact that the battery ECU calculates battery resistance by monitoring battery voltage and current, it can determine when it's deteriorated. And so can we. The battery ECU also monitors the difference between the min and the max block voltage and sets this code if the difference is too great, over three-tenths of a volt. So I said, hey, we can too. We can calculate internal battery resistance. Use the scan data to get the load and the no load voltage and amperage from the battery pack. Select the battery pack state of charge PID and the battery amperage on the scan tool. 
and you can see that's what we have down here on the bottom battery state of charge and battery amps and what we have here is two different states so test drive the vehicle normally so that the battery ECU will see a charging and a discharging condition under light load our state of charge was 16.2 volts and the amps were at 2.6 amps under load it was 14.5 volts at 107.3 amps so we had light load voltage of 16.2 we have load voltage of 14.45 draw your line do your math take the little number away from the big number and what we have is delta voltage and delta voltage is the difference between load and light load and that happens to be 1.75 volts so our delta voltage is voltage at light load 16.2 take away the load voltage 14.45 and come up with an answer of 1.75 delta volts and five so let's do the same thing for current our loaded current is 107.3 amps while our light current is 2.6 amps that's not minus 2.6 amps there it's doing the math because we're gonna draw a line we're gonna take 2.6 away from the 107 and we come up with 104.7 delta amps our delta amps was 107.3 loaded amperage take away the 2.6 under the light load and our answer was 104.7 delta amps to determine the internal battery resistance we're going to divide the delta voltage by the delta amps so we have delta voltage of 1.75 we have delta amperage of 104.7 the internal resistance is delta V divided by delta A 1.75 divided by 104.7 equals decimal 0167 ohms or 16.7 milliohms and we see in good modules in good battery packs somewhere between 14 milliohms to about 24 25 milliohms now look at the brick and block voltage the block voltage you can use scan data and the brick voltage you have to use a conductance type uh, battery tester because scan data measures and determines block voltage not the individual brick and just to remind you that it takes two bricks to make one block so here we have a brick six individual cells and we take our conductance tester and we connect it to the positive and the negative terminals of that brick here's the diagnostic readout we're going to invert it so you can see it easier here is the diagnostic readout these are 7.5 batteries or bricks we can see that the first fuel are normal then we have one below that three tenths different or we have one below specifications then we have a normal then we have a whole string of low batteries then we have a high one at 8.4 and then our ending ones are low normal high what we have is voltage we have been looking at the voltage column let's look at the next column and get our conductance and this test unit from Medtronic's calls it M H O S or MOS now good strong cells are 130 to 138 they fail if they go under 100 so we have 130 to 138 and we're doing well here then we drop down to low but still good and when we come down here we're still a little bit low but good now we have a 66 and that's under 100 and then we have a 57 and that's under 100 we can see 
that the 66 and the 57 are the same two bricks that had high voltage. Bricks 28 and 31 need to be replaced because those are the two bad units. So we could have done some of this with scan data, but we have to remember that that's block voltage. The reason we did it with a tester is conductance is a good or accepted way to test these batteries, not a uh, carbon pile load type tester. So by measuring uh, internal resistance and brick voltage and doing it with conductance, we can go into scan data and see which ones have to be tested and then take our units to that individual test. So when we're looking at scan data, we can have battery block, min and max voltage. Remember, we said those should be no greater than three-tenths of a volt. And then we have that voltage for each block, 1 through 14. And the maximum difference, once again, should be no greater than three-tenths of a volt.